Chapter 4 of the Epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Romans, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson, by HisFaith.com. Chapter 4 What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, hath found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not toward God. For what saith the scripture? And Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned unto him for righteousness. Now, to him that worketh, the reward is not reckoned as of grace, but as of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is reckoned for righteousness. Even as David also pronounceth blessing upon the man unto whom God reckoneth righteousness, apart from works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not reckon sin. Is this blessing then pronounced upon the circumcision, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say to Abraham, his faith was reckoned for righteousness. How then was it reckoned? When he was in circumcision, or in uncircumcision. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had while he was in uncircumcision, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be in uncircumcision, that righteousness might be reckoned unto them. And the father of circumcision to them who not only are of the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had in uncircumcision. For not through the law was the promise to Abraham or to his seed that he should be heir of the world, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they that are of the law are heirs, faith is made void, and the promise is made of none effect. For the law worketh wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there transgression. For this cause it is of faith, that it may be according to grace, to the end that the promise may be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith, of Abraham, who is the father of us all, as it is written, a father of many nations have I made thee, before him whom he believed, even God, whom giveth life to the dead, and calleth the things that are not as though they were who in hope believed against hope, to the end that he might become a father of many nations, according to that which had been spoken. So shall thy seed be. And without being weakened in faith, he considered his own body, now as good as dead, he being about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb, yet looking unto the promise of God, he wavered not through unbelief, but waxed strong through faith, giving glory to God, and being fully assured that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Wherefore also it was reckoned unto him for righteousness. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was reckoned unto him, but for our sake also, unto whom it shall be reckoned, who believe on him that raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. End of chapter 4. Chapter 1 of the Gospel According to Luke, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson, by HisFaith.com. Chapter 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to draw up a narrative concerning those matters which have been fulfilled among us, even as they delivered them unto us, who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having traced the course of all things accurately from the first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty concerning the things wherein thou wast instructed. There was in the days of Herod, king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abijah, and he had a wife of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. 
And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. Now it came to pass, while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to enter into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the hour of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zacharias was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, because thy supplication is heard, and thy wife, Elizabeth, shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and he shall drink no wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn unto the Lord their God, and he shall go before his face in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to walk in the wisdom of the just, to make ready for the Lord a people prepared for him. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak unto thee, and to bring thee these good tidings. And behold, thou shalt be silent, and not able to speak, until the day that these things shall come to pass, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people were waiting for Zacharias, and they marveled while he tarried in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. And he continued making signs unto them, and remained dumb. And it came to pass, when the days of his ministration were fulfilled, he departed unto his house. And after these days Elizabeth his wife conceived, and she hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord done unto me, in the days wherein he looked upon me, to take away my reproach among men. Now in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this might be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob for ever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee. Wherefore also the holy thing which is begotten shall be called the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, thy kinswoman, she also hath conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her that was called barren. For no word from God shall be void of power. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in these days, and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias, and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass, when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she lifted up her voice with a loud cry, and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come unto me? For behold, when the voice of thy salutation came into mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a fulfillment of the things which have been spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath looked upon the low estate of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things and holy is his name. And his mercy is unto generations and generations, on them that fear him. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their heart. 
He hath put down princes from their thrones, and hath exalted them of low degree. The hungry he hath filled with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath given help to Israel his servant, that he might remember mercy, as he spake unto our fathers, toward Abraham and his seed for ever. And Mary abode with her about three months, and returned unto her house. Now Elizabeth's time was fulfilled that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son, and her neighbors and her kinsfolk heard that the Lord had magnified his mercy towards her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father what he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake, blessing God. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them, and all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all that heard them laid them up in their heart, saying, What then shall this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit, and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. For he hath visited and wrought redemption for his people, and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets that have been from of old, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to show mercy towards our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware unto Abraham our father, to grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies should serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. Yea, and thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the Most High, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to make ready his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people in the remission of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high shall visit us, to shine upon them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew, and waxed strong in spirit, and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. End of chapter 1. Chapter 5 of the Gospel According to Matthew, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson, ByHisFaith.com. Chapter 5 And seeing the multitudes, he went up into the mountain. And when he had sat down, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are they that have been persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall reproach you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely, for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets that were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under the bushel, but on the stand. And it shineth unto all that are in the house. Even so, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Think not that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I came not to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass away from the law, till all things be accomplished. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. 
But whosoever shall do and teach them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it was said to them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that every one who is angry with his brother shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. And whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of the hell of fire. If therefore thou art offering thy gift at the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly, while thou art with him in the way, lest haply the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou have paid the last farthing. Ye have heard that it was said, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that every one that looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye causeth thee to stumble, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not thy whole body to be cast into hell. And if thy right hand causeth thee to stumble, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not thy whole body go into hell. It was said also, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you that every one that putteth away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, maketh her an adulteress, and whosoever shall marry her when she is put away committeth adultery. Again ye have heard that it was said to them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by the heaven, for it is the throne of God, nor by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, for thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your speech be yea, yea, nay, nay, and whatsoever is more than these is of the evil one. Ye have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, Resist not him that is evil, but whosoever smiteth thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man would go to law with thee, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it was said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, and pray for them that persecute you, that ye may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if ye love them that love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the Gentiles the same? Ye therefore shall be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. End of chapter 5. Chapter 12 of the Gospel According to Luke, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson, ByHisFaith.com. Chapter 12. In the meantime, when the many thousands of the multitude were gathered together, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. But there is nothing covered up that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. Wherefore, whatsoever ye have said in the darkness shall be heard in the light. And what ye have spoken in the ear of the inner chambers shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will warn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him who after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. 
Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pence? And not one of them is forgotten in the sight of God. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, ye are of more value than many sparrows. And I say unto you, every one who shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me in the presence of men shall be denied in the presence of the angels of God. And every one who shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven. And when they bring you before the synagogues and the rulers and the authorities, be not anxious how or what ye shall answer or what ye shall say. For the Holy Spirit shall teach you in that very hour what ye ought to say. And one out of the multitude said unto him, Teacher, bid my brother divide the inheritance with me. But he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and keep yourselves from all covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he reasoned within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have not where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, be merry. But God said unto him, Thou foolish one, this night is thy soul required of thee, and the things which thou hast prepared, whose shall they be? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Be not anxious for your life, what ye shall eat, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. For the life is more than the food, and the body than the raiment. Consider the ravens, that they sow not, neither reap, which have no store chamber nor barn, and God feedeth them. Of how much more value are ye than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a cubit unto the measure of his life? If then ye are not able to do even that which is least, why are ye anxious concerning the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God doth so clothe the grass in the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more shall he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, and what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For of all these things do the nations of the world seek after, but your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Yet seek ye his kingdom, and these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that which ye have, and give alms. Make for yourselves purses which wax not old a treasure in the heavens that falleth not, where no thief draweth near, neither moth destroyeth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about, and your lamps burning, and be ye yourselves like unto men looking for their Lord, when he shall return from the marriage feast, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may straightway open unto him. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself, and make them sit down to meet, and shall come and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, and if in the third, and find them so, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what hour the thief was coming, he would have watched, and not have left his house to be broken through. Be ye also ready. For in an hour that ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. And Peter said, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even unto all? And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall set over his household, to give them their portion of food in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will set him over all that he hath. 
But if that servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and the maid servants, and to eat and drink and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he expecteth not, and in an hour when he knoweth not, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint his portion with the unfaithful. And that servant who knew his Lord's will, and made not ready, nor did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not, and did things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. And to whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. And to whom they commit much, of him will they ask the more. I came to cast fire upon the earth, and what do I desire, if it is already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straitened till it be accomplished? Think ye that I am come to give peace in the earth? I tell you nay, but rather division. For there shall be from henceforth five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. They shall be divided father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against her mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And he said to the multitudes also, When ye see a cloud rising in the west, straightway ye say, There cometh a shower, and so it cometh to pass. And when ye see a south wind blowing, ye say, There will be a scorching heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye know how to interpret the face of the earth and the heaven, but how is it that ye know not how to interpret this time? And why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? For as thou art going with thine adversary before the magistrate, on the way give diligence to be quit of him, lest haply he drag thee unto the judge, and the judge shall deliver thee to the officer, and the officer shall cast thee into prison. I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou have paid the very last might. End of chapter 12